So let's get the parties. Oh, let me say, got it. There we go. And if you see a little pop up box that said recording in process, just go, got it. Hello, 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 and welcome to Tina's Joyful Kitchen with the Fairfax County Library. Thank you so much, Library, the Fairfax Library, for having me with all of our, um, our, our people. <laughs> Here we go. And all right, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping. If the internet goes out, don't worry, we'll be right back. Uh, also, anything that I talk about today is not to be considered medical advice. If you have some medical questions, please consult with a doctor or a nurse. Also, I know that when we multitask, we literally experience less joy. And this is Tina's Joyful Kitchen, all about the joy in life, right? All about the joy. So I'm going to challenge each and every one of you, take your phones, put them on silent, close out of all of those browsers and be with me 100%. And I guarantee you, you will experience a ton of joy with me today. So if you're in to experience a ton of joy, put I'm in in the chat. Go ahead and type I'm in in that chat box if you are in to be with me 100% and experience a ton of joy. If you're in to be with, how many people do we have here, Caitlin? How many people are, are in, the, in the chat room? How we many have nine people. Nine people. So I'm expecting at least half of you, at least half of you to have an I'm in in here. Otherwise, I don't know if I can go on because this is about joy. All right, we got at least four or five. We got another one, I'm in, yes. Very, very, very good. Well, let me tell you what we're going to make today. We're getting a little head start here. Let me tell you what we're gonna make. And then I'll introduce, oh, let me just introduce myself first. My name is Tina McDermott. I'm the lazy inspirational chef. I'm a speaker. I'm a weight loss coach. I've been doing this for 21 years. This is my love. This is my passion. I'll tell you, there's no place that I'd rather be than right here, right now with you in my kitchen, teaching the world how to, how to, how to find joy in the kitchen, even if you don't know how to cook, even if you don't like to cook, so you can live a life that's full of health, full of vibrancy and free, free from dis-ease, free from diet and free to live your life the way you want to live it joyfully 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 because i'm all about the joy all right you ready i'm going to tell you what we're going to make today this is one of my favorite menus and it is turkey and stuffing meatloaf no more boring meatloafs turkey and stuffing all together meatloaf complete with cranberry sauce homemade that is and we're going to make green bean casserole with portobello mushrooms, the healthiest, most delicious version you will ever eat in your life, as well as apple pie cups. Apple pie cups, instead of making a big apple pie and going for a big serving, they're little muffin cups. So they're small little servings and they're fantastic and they're super healthy. You can even have them for breakfast. Promise. I promise. I promise. And I'm going to teach you how we're going to make them super healthy. Are you ready to get started? Are you all ready to get started? But get started in that chat box. But get started in that chat box. If you're ready to get started, let me see. Get started in that chat box. Get started. Well, I already did start, just so you know. I already did start. Good, 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 good. Oh, you know what I wanted to know? You know what I want to know? Who is actually cooking along with me? Because sometimes people like to cook along with me, and I just like, I want to. A, acknowledge that. I love when people want to cook along with me. So if you're cooking along with me, put a one in the chat. If you're watching, put a W in the chat. If you're cooking along with me, put a one in the chat. If you're watching, put a W in the chat. Let me see who's watching and who's cooking. It's all good, no matter which way you do it. I'm going to be back again uh, December 15th. And if you want to cook along with me, just get all of the products, get everything set up the way that I have stuff set up in different trays and have all your produce washed and cook along with me. And it's fun. I think it's a lot of fun. And I'll just make concessions to make sure that you are with me. And I even bring people on camera. I even bring people on camera. Now, who here has gone to a restaurant and at the end, they order their favorite dessert and they're out? Who has done that? Put a D in the chat if that's happened to you. You've gone to your favorite restaurant and then you go to order dessert and they are out of dessert. It's so sad. It's so sad when that happens. So sad when that happens. And 
I'm going to start with the dessert. Why? Because the dessert kind of takes a little bit longer. So when you're cooking, you have to just take a look what's going to be done when, and you don't want to put savory things in an oven with sweet things. Fortunately, I have a toaster oven that's an Emerald Legacy little oven and uh, is, it's a convectional oven. So I'm going to use that for my savory and we're going to put the sweet in the oven, which the oven is already on at 400 degrees. And what I've been doing, you've been seeing me, I'm slicing up apples. And people ask, well, Tina, what kind of apples are you slicing up? What kind of apples are the best for apple pie? Whichever apples you have, honestly. I always buy a lot of apples because my husband goes through phases of loving apples and then stopping to eat apples. And, and so whatever apples I have, okay? They say that Granny Smith are, and Macintosh are some of the best for, I think Macintosh is some of, I don't know. It, it doesn't bother me and I don't care. My sister's very particular as to, what apples should use, but what's your favorite apple? Does anyone here have a favorite apple? Put it in the chat. If you have a favorite apple, put it in the chat. Now, apples can be a little bit of a pain to peel and everything, but not really. Do you see how it's easy it is? I, I have been cutting like the way that I'm cutting apples for my entire life. And yes, I'm get a little paring knife and I'm cutting towards myself. They say you're not supposed to cut towards yourself, but I've been doing this since I was a kid. My mom is off the boat Italian. This is the way she learned. This is the way that she taught me to hold a knife and to cut. And my thumb is still alive and non-cut. Okay. Apples are a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful fruit. And I remember we've been going back and forth to Italy my entire life. And at the end of every meal, growing up, my dad always cut up an apple or some piece of hard fruit pear, and he would cut it up and give everybody a slice because the, it, it, they, they didn't know the exact way why we did this, but the enzymes in the fruit actually help you to digest your meal. It's digestive enzymes, right? Digestive enzymes. I already scored a lemon in here. The lemon's going to keep the apples from turning brown. I had put the lemon in there because I was cutting them up before the show. And so even in Italy, when I go to Italy, my uncles, every, my aunts, they all cut up an apple, sit there, cut up apples and pass them out to everybody in the family because they're good for you. Okay. And honey crisp is my favorite. Fuji is my next favorite. Yeah. I want to know what is your favorite? What is your favorite apple? What is your favorite apple? What is your favorite apple? Okay. I'm making the filling right now. The filling is super easy. We're going to do a little pinch of salt little pinch of salt, about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Salt helps to pop the flavor. I, I like to put my tapioca flour in a big jar. I love glass jars. Love, love, love. Oh, my oven's to temperature. I'm going to put um, apple pie spice. I buy my spices in bulk because I use them so much. And I just mix up my own pumpkin pie spice, apple pie spice. Apple pie spice is slightly different from pumpkin pie spice. It has more ginger. It has, let me see what it has. Cinnamon, of course, nutmeg and, and ginger. That's it. That's it. So I'm going to put, let me see, two and a half tablespoons, heaping tablespoons. Okay. We're going to put some vanilla in there. Oh, and I got this really good Madagascar bourbon vanilla. This is an organic vanilla. And don't chintz on the imitation stuff. I'm just telling you this, the, when, when you go for the Madagascar bourbon, oh my gosh, it really pops the flavor and you want your treats. You want your food to be joyful in your mouth. As my sister, my late sister would say, you want to party in your mouth with every bite. <laughs> I love her. Love her, love her, love her. I always think about that. Just let's have a party in our mouth. Now I'm going to put a little bit of sweetener in here and the sweetener I'm going to use, I'm going to make a selection here. Which sweetener do I want to use? I can use coconut sugar. Coconut sugar is less processed than the white sugar. And if you are diabetic or insulin resistant, you really want to stay away from anything that's going to uh, increase your glucose levels and elicit an insulin response, okay? You also want to stay away from artificial sugars. So alternatively, what you can do is, you know, there's stevia, but stevia has like a bitter aftertaste. There's also erythritol, the company called Swerve. I ran out of it 
uh, that is erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol made from fermented vegetables. And they have brown sugar. I ran out, but that is wonderful in here. Or you can use monk fruit. Monk fruit is literally a fruit that is sweet, but does not elevate your blood glucose levels, your blood sugar levels. Because when your blood sugar levels are, are elevated, your pancreas excretes insulin and it takes all of that glucose most of it goes to fat storage. And insulin is also known to scar your arteries and cause your body to increase the LDL, the low density lipoproteins, the small ones that wreak havoc in your arteries and cause a lot of things like stroke, heart attacks. So we want to go really low on sugar. So that's why I'm going to use confectioner sugar, Lacanto brand monk fruit. I know that was a whole bunch of stuff all at once. But Lakanto is my favorite brand. That's why I have it in front of you here of monk fruit for baking. I make brownies. I make cheesecakes. I make cookies. I make so many things with this Lakanto confectioner sugar, monk fruit confectioner sugar. And nobody knows the difference. Nobody knows the difference. Okay. And it's not going to elevate your glucose levels. It's not going to elevate your insulin levels and it's going to keep your diabetes, keep you from getting diabetes or keep your diabetes in check. Okay. So that's one of my favorite things. All right. Any, then there's any questions. I want to see it in the chat by all means, please put it in the chat. Any questions that you might have. I think I only have a half of lemon in here. I think I want a little bit more lemon. Let me get some lemon over here. Hold on a second. This is orange juice that is for the cranberry sauce. So I'm just pouring that out. And I'm going to put a little bit more lemon juice. I think I put only half a lemon in there and it, I can feel that it needs a little more. I might've put a little extra apple. doesn't matter. You know, remember I'm the lazy inspirational chef. I never do things exact. I never make the same recipe exact every single time. It drives my husband crazy, but that's okay. That's my personality. I was never taught to measure growing up. My mom always did a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And that's how I learned. That's how I learned. My, my older sister is horrified when she sees me baking or cooking because I don't do things exact, but my food's delicious. My food's delicious. So here we go. We've got our apple, pot, our apple filling. And you could do this the night before if you wanted to, or you can bake this whole thing in advance. You can bake this whole thing in advance. Next, what we're going to do, I melted a quarter cup of some butter at the bottom of my bowl here. And then I'm going to put some almond flour. If you don't, who, who here is, is this the first show with me? And who here has been in other shows? So if it's your first show, put a one. If it's your second show, put a two, three. I think we've done four or five of them with uh, Fairfax Library. So tell me, what show number is this that you've been with me? Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? What show number is this? Oh, somebody had four. Okay, good. Somebody's two. Jeanette is two. Lynn is four. Zolbu is one. This is your first one. All right, I put a pinch of sea salt in here. And again, I need some sweetener. So I'm going to put some more monk fruit. This I'm making the crust, okay? But it's, it's not really a crust. Oh, it is. It is a little crust. All right, good. So you've been with me before. And, and some people are brand new to me. I'm just going to mash all this up. Let me see if I've got everything. Got the salt, the sugar, the butter, and the almond flour. Simple, simple, simple dimple. Okay. I use almond flour versus regular flour. It's much, much, much healthier for you. White flour is a highly processed and bleached. And not only that, but it's full of gluten. And tell me, and if anybody wants to learn about why gluten is difficult on your body, put gluten in the chat and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Some people might not want to talk about it, so I don't have to, but I want to know what is your interest? Because I want to speak to you and to what your interests are today, not necessarily what I want to talk about, right? Yeah, so the white flour, when you mix the flour with water, what do you get? You get paste. You get a little bit of paste or a lot of bit of paste. Did I not put enough butter? Quarter cup of melted unsalted butter. Okay. 
you get paste. And when you have paste that goes through your intestines, it literally scars the intestines and causes your intestines to be permeable and food actually leaches into the rest of your body, causing your body to work triple time. And that is not healthy, not at all. Okay, that's the part that is not healthy. That's very challenging on your body. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking up the, the sugar. I've got the butter in here, a little bit of salt. And I'm just trying to make a little crust out of it. Trying to make a little crust out of it. And this crust is a little unconventional. Okay, I think my butter was a little on the hard side, but that's okay. That's all right. It will all come together. I'm going to use my fingers and do the rest of this. Okay. And any questions that you have, please, please, please put them in the chat. Put them in the chat. I want to know. Now, I love stoneware. I love stoneware. This is my muffin, my muffin, uh, they call it tin, but my, it's not a tin. It's my muffin container, whatever, pan. And it's stoneware. I love it because it, stone cooks very evenly. I have stone trays. I have stone everything. And I, when I got married some 17, 18 years ago, uh, it, this was part of my registry. So I have almost everything that's stone. And it also makes me just feel closer to the earth. I just love it. Absolutely love it. What I did is I lined each one with a parchment paper muffin cup. You can use paper. It's fine. I like the parchment paper. It just take, it doesn't stick. And then you don't end up eating paper later on. So definitely line these. You cannot do this without lining them. And you don't have to spray them because there's already fat in the crust, so to speak. Okay. There's already... So how much almond flour and sugar? Uh, the recipes are online and uh, Rabinder can tell you exactly where to get the recipes, right? I think that, I don't know if they were emailed the recipes, but it's one cup of almond flour and it was about, mm, I think it was a half a cup of the monk fruit. Yeah, half a cup of, nope, it was a quarter cup of monk fruit, quarter cup of monk fruit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of the crust. It doesn't matter that it's crumbly. None of it matters. A little pinch of sea salt and a quarter cup of butter. Okay, melted butter. I'm going to put a little bit of this crust at the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. Crumbly is perfectly fine because we're just going to take, we're going to put apples on the top here. And then once it's done, you're going to take a spoon and eat it with a spoon. It's not to be eaten like a cupcake. It's to be eaten with a spoon. This is one of the recipes that I, that I made up myself little help from my friend who is diabetic and she has to come up with all of these different things. And, you know, here at the bottom line, I'm not diabetic. However, I eat like a diabetic so that I don't become diabetic. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Okay. So there we go. And don't be worried about getting your hands a little messy. You can wash them up. Life is messy. Wash your hands. It's good. I'm telling you, I got to make a t-shirt. Life is messy. Wash your hands. Life is messy. Wash your hands. All right. So there we go. We've got our crust on the bottom, right? There we go. Yeah, Rabindra, can you type it in the chat where people can find the recipes, please? And now I've got the apple pie filling and we're going to fill each of our muffin cups. It's so much easier to just do these with these beautiful fingers that God gave us. And I, as opposed to having to get a spoon and life is messy. Just wash your hands. It's all good. It's all good. Who would prefer to use a spoon or your fingers with, with this recipe? Who would rather use the, a spoon or their fingers with this recipe? Put a spoon or fingers in the, in the, in, in the chat box. Oh, thank you, Ravinder. She put the link in there where you can get the recipes. Very good. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I want to know, I see, you know what? I don't get to see your gorgeous faces. I've been doing remote for a long time. And, and before that, you know, I got to see people in person. I did these cooking shows in person and it's so nice to be able to see people's smiling faces and just, and you can kind of see what they're talking or what, what, what they're feeling. If they're feeling joy, or if they're bored, if they have a question. And when we are remote, it's a little different. And the only way that I get to know what's going on with my audience is when you chat with me in the chat box, which is why I always, always, always like to ask that you chat with me in the chat box. Turkey and stuffing meatloaf, healthy green bean casserole, apple pie cups. Yes, those are the recipes. That is correct. That is what we're making today. So I so appreciate when you chat in the chat box with me. And if you don't want to, that's okay. No pressure here. 
no pressure. I'm just letting you know that I really like it and I appreciate you when you do chat with me. There's all that lemon juice at the bottom. Get all of it up because it's going to be so yummy in this dish. So I have the oven on at 400 and I'm going to bake this for about 20 minutes. Now I am baking this for 20 minutes in stoneware, okay? My stone is 20 minutes. For a regular tin, it might take a little less, might be 17 minutes, 18 minutes. I'm not sure. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick because life is messy. I watch cooking shows sometimes and, and when I see people not washing their hands in between, like especially when they touch meat, oh, makes me upset. Okay, so in the oven, Caitlin, 20 minute timer, please. Okay, so that part is done. All right, you ready for the next recipe? You ready for the next thing? Ready for the next thing? We're gonna turn the oven on to, this is my Emerald Legacy uh, little, air fryer, toaster oven, convectional oven, everything. And we're gonna do 20 minutes and we're gonna do 400 degrees. Actually, when it's convection, you should go a little bit lower. So I'm gonna put it up at 20, I'm gonna put it 350 because my husband, um, now the way that I have you baking this, the string beans will still be a little crispy, okay? If you like your string beans cooked a little more, mushy or al dente, then you want to cook instead of 400 degrees, go down to 375 and go a little longer on your temperature or just check them. See how they're, see if they're done. See if you, if they're to your liking, right? Now you can use a cookie sheet for this, or you can use any casserole dish that you want to use. Okay. And this is another stoneware. Yes. I love my stoneware. I love my stoneware. And you know, growing up, I always called them string beans. And I've come to find out that America calls them green beans. No wonder I'm just, I'm just different. My mom always called them string beans. And I'm trying to remember how to say these in Italian. It's, it's driving me crazy right now. Anyhow, so we're, I have French string beans. You can use whatever kind of string beans you want. I've washed them all. And I made sure that there's I don't mind that little tip on the end of my string beans or my grain beans. I don't mind that. That's fine. It's the other tip. If it's got a little uh, scab, then you can take that off with your knife. Growing up, it was always my dad's chore to clean the string beans. And for me, I like the French ones because they don't have, they don't have as much cleaning, but they're also skinnier and not as moist inside. Okay. Now, here's the thing with this, with this green bean casserole. A casserole is anything, a meal that you put in a, in, a, in a dish and you serve, okay? Most people make this green bean casserole at Thanksgiving and they use, what do they normally use? We say that in the South too, string beans. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm so, thank you for, for confirming that for me. I appreciate it. So what, how do most Americans make their green bean casserole? Somebody type it in the chat. How do they most, how do most Americans make a green bean casserole? Come on, I wanna know how do most Americans make a green bean casserole? What are the ingredients in a green bean condensed soup, right? Now, thank you, Mary. I want you to look at the ingredients in that condensed soup, in that cream of mushroom soup. And I want to know if you know exactly what each and every one of those ingredients is. My rule of thumb is if a third grader can't read it and understand it, don't eat it. I'll tell you, I have looked at those ingredients. Having suffered from Lyme disease as well as having a, a sister who passed away from cancer, I am uber careful about what I put in my system. Now, sometimes, hey, I have a little bit of fun, but never at the expense of MSG. Right, never at the expense of MSG because the Lyme affected my brain. And anytime that I eat A, too much sugar, or B, MSG, my brain doesn't function really well. Like right now, I can't find the word in Italian and, and I speak the language uh, for string beans, but it'll come to me by the end of the class. But the, those, con uh, 
those soups are full of MSG. I talk about MSG almost every single class because it is so important. It's one of those things that is not talked about enough in this world. It's not talked about enough. And that's, it makes me very, very, very sad. Um, MSG, people tell me all the time, oh, I don't need MSG. And then I go into their, pin, into their pantry. I go into their kitchen. I examine how they're eating, what they're eating. And what I find, what do you think I find? tons of MSG because MSG can be hidden under 78 plus at different world words and truth in labeling.org. I think it's that one or that website, or it's the enlightened working group, enlightened working group.org that Caitlin, can you look that up? Caitlin, the enlightened working group, and that will give you 78 different names for MSG, autolyzed yeast extract, uh, in isolated whey protein, I could no, uh, soy protein could be MSG, cornstarch could be MSG, um, the word spices, the word natural flavors, I can go on and on, there's so many of them, texturized vegetable protein, that's another one. So there's so many terrible things in that cream of mushroom soup, why? Why would you do that to yourself? Hey, yeah, it's delicious. But MSG, it makes you so excited that it, it, it destroys your brain cells. They're called excitotoxins. And not only that, it makes you eat more. And not only that, it makes you feel like, like yuck. Yeah. And who wants to feel phenomenal after their Thanksgiving dinner? Who wants to feel energized and, and ready to go on their thanks after Thanksgiving dinner? Who wants to feel energized? Put energized in Fagiolini Grazie. Grazie Rabinder. I couldn't remember the name. My brain was, I hit Fagiolini. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. Who wants to feel energized? Yeah, energy is good after the Thanksgiving meal. Or who wants to go, oh my God, I ate too much and feel yucky the, that day or the next day. You want to feel energized. I'm sure you do. Otherwise, why would you be here, right? You want to feel energized. And that's why this is the perfect addition or substitution for a green bean casserole. I didn't think that that was enough lemon. So I'm going to put a little bit more lemon. Look at that massive lemon that I got from BJ's. I very rarely shop the big box stores anymore, but because I have Aldi's down the street and I get most stuff from Aldi's, but that is massive, this lemon. This is like five lemons in one. So I'm gonna put a little bit more lemon juice. I, um, I don't typically put lemon on my green beans. I'm trying really hard to call them green beans versus string beans. Fagiolini, my goodness. I grew up with fagiolini. Yeah. But I've discovered that putting lemon juice on this particular recipe is absolutely amazing. So I'm going to highly recommend that you put some lemon juice on there. Next, we're going to do the old fashioned Italian dressing, which is salt and pepper and a little bit of olive oil, okay? There's the salt, half a teaspoon, teaspoon, go to your liking, okay? You can add it, but you can never, you can never take it away. You can add it, but you can never take it away. So go easy on the salt, even though you think that I went a little heavy on the salt, okay? which I may have, <laughs> I may have, but you know, I, we just, my mom never taught me to measure. We always pinch the salt and put the salt in by our fingers. Sometimes I measure like why there's a half a teaspoon in there every once in a while I do. And what do we have here? Freshly cracked black pepper. Remember salt enhances the actual flavor of the food, but pepper changes the flavor. Pepper changes the flavor. Funny thing in Italy, they'll tell you that Pepper is bad for your heart and the salt is good. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Okay, piece the resistance with this particular dish is, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot, olive oil. Get yourself some really good olive oil. I, my mom gets me these big gallons of it and I decant them into my glass jars. So a liberal on the email to, I mean, on the email, on the, uh, the olive oil, two to three tablespoons, just pour it on top. Always salt, pepper, and then the olive oil because it brings the salt and pepper down. I'm not gonna stir this, okay? I'm not gonna stir this. There's no reason to. I've got some Parmesan cheese, grated Parmesan cheese. And I have a tip for you. You can put this on later. And let me tell you, when you put it on now, it is just to die for. I like it roasted right in with everything, okay? Tip with Parmesan cheese. 
never dip your fingers into the bag or into the container of Parmesan cheese because the fingers might have, what, look, I have string beans on them. I have lemon juice on them. Could introduce some other bacteria into it and you'll get mold. No, you could possibly get mold, I should say. Okay, so that's just a tip for you. Ready for the oven, another 20 minute timer, Caitlin. Oh, actually I don't need a 20 minute timer because I have it on the Lagasse. It's already on a timer, okay. How are we doing with the apple cups? What, how's the timer on that, Caitlin? You have about 10 minutes left. Thank you, dear. Thank you, thank you. If you haven't already figured it out, Caitlin is my wonderful assistant and Rabinder is our wonderful host from the Fairfax County Library. Thank you for being here. Okay. All right. Wow, we're doing phenomenal on time and we have all of this time to make our turkey and stuffing meatloaf. Let's start with the cranberry sauce. Who here gets cranberry sauce from a jar? Put jar in the chat and don't be embarrassed. It's all good. There's no judgment here, none whatsoever. Put jar in the chat. If you get your cranberry sauce from a jar, I, growing up, we never had cranberry sauce. We just never made cranberry sauce. It wasn't a thing in our house. It's not a thing in Italy. And here in America, I, I found I really love cranberries, love cranberries. And to find out, look how beautiful and red they are. They're, they're full of something called anthocyanidins, which are actually they're called pro-anthocyanidins, a phytonutrient that fights off free radicals in your body. Helps to prevent cancer, people. Just helps have a great life. So I keep them in the freezer because I can only get them one time of the year. So now I'm going to have my freezer completely full of cranberries. Now, cranberry, yeah, fresh cranberries, thank you. Cranberry sauce in the jar, the jellied one, or whatever one, it's full of sugar. It's full of sugar. And some of it is high fructose corn sugar that gives you a non-alcoholic fatty liver. And if, and if you are diabetic or want to eat like a diabetic so that you don't get it like I do, then you don't need that kind of sugar. Make your own cranberry sauce. You're going to see how simple, simple, simple it is to make your own cranberry sauce. I already have, I put the orange juice in there. I had, I had squeezed my oranges. I found these juicing oranges. I was at the store the other day and I could only find juicing oranges regular than regular oranges. Good for me, I needed the juice anyway, right? But you don't need juicing oranges. Real quick, it's like a half a cup of orange juice in there with the fresh cranberries. I'm gonna put a little pinch of salt in there, just a little pinch. And what else am I gonna put in here? Make sure cranberries, orange juice. Oh, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of either maple syrup, Honey, you can use honey, or can you can use something called yakon syrup. Yakon syrup, I know I talk a lot about diabetics and diabetes and such because my mom has diabetes and it, hmm, it's just not a good thing. And many people, I'm 54, as we get older, you're more just predisposed to it because it's something that can creep up over time. And I'm very, very, very conscientious of it. Yakon syrup is similar to honey, but it's got a third of the sugar of honey. So look at the consistency of the Yakon syrup. Look at that consistency. Look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is. And it's got a lovely, lovely, lovely flavor. It's made from a, a root, the Yakon root. And this is Yakon syrup. So much, much, much less um, sugar. Could I use the monk fruit in here? Absolutely. I could have used monk fruit, but I wanted to introduce you to a couple of different ways that you can sweeten your cranberry sauce. And if you want your cranberries to have a maple flavor, but not the sugar from the maple syrup, then you can use a maple extract. You can use a maple extract, okay? Is everyone having fun? If you're having fun, put fun in the chat. Put fun in the chat. Yakon syrup. If you're having fun, put fun in the chat. Yakon Y-A-C-O-N, Y-A-C-O-N. Yep, organic yakon syrup is what I have here. Now I'm gonna cook this for a little bit. Caitlin, remind me in three minutes to stir it, please. All right, there we go. So next, now that we've got the cranberry sauce cooking, it's super simple, super duper simple. and Use your cranberries in smoothies and everything. Oh, it's so good. I also make a cranberry sauce 
for the top of my cheesecake. Delicious, very, very similar to this, very similar recipe. All right, next I'm gonna use my, <clears throat> excuse me, cast iron skillet. There we go, didn't wanna turn on. And we're going to start making our turkey and stuffing meatloaf. All right, let me get the turkey, ground turkey out of the fridge. Okay, we've got a pound of ground turkey right there, ready to go. I have one person having fun, two people having fun. What about the rest of you? Have some fun. Maple syrup and honey are no nose for diabetics. That is correct, Mary. That is absolutely correct. But if you want to have a little bit of, of a treat, try the yakon syrup, just a little bit of it. Yeah. All right, three people having fun. Good, 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 good. That's what we want. We want to have a lot of fun. And I want to make sure that I'm answering all of your questions and that you are engaged with me the whole time. I'm going to show you how to cut an onion without crying, okay? You're going to take your little paring knife and you're going to get the root bulb. I'm going to do this quick because my butter is melting. I'm going to get the root bulb and I want to take that root bulb out. They say that this is what makes you cry. So I'm going to go in as a, at a diagonal and cut all the way around and get that root bulb out. I don't cry probably because I have contacts and it probably shields my eyes from the, uh, the, 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 the juice spritzing from the onion. My nieces have goggles. Have you seen goggles for cutting up onions? Oh my gosh, they're so funny. We have pictures of the girls with goggles on cutting up onions. They love onions so much. Okay, so here we go. Now we're gonna grab our knife and round things we're going to make flat. Always make round things flat. And I'm gonna score the onion. So I'm not gonna cut it all the way through. I'm gonna score it and then slice it this way. There we go. I'm making the stuffing, making the stuffing right now, making the stuffing for the meatloaf. And the stuffing is gonna go right into the meatloaf. So much fun. Has anyone ever made this before? If you've ever made this before, put stuffing in the chat. If you've made this before, let me know in the chat if you have made this before. Let me know in the chat. By the way, that piece that you scored, just turn it sideways and then chop it, okay? A little bit of dead onion in there. There we go. By the way, never scrape the board with your knife. Never, never, never. Dulls the knife and a dull knife is a dangerous knife. So we're going to scrape up either, pick it up with your hands or get one of these little handy dandy scrapers. My sister had this and, and she uses it. I'm like, oh, what a pain. Just use your hands, use the knife. Well, now I know better because A, you can cut yourself. Not that I did. You can cut yourself with a knife and you can also dull the blade. One other thing is wooden cutting boards. This is, I'm learning that wooden cutting boards helps keep your blade sharp. The plastic ones dull the blade as well as hold on to toxins and everything else. Next, we're gonna do the next hardest vegetable, which are carrots. My husband loves carrots. I think this is his favorite vegetable next to broccoli in the whole wide world. So we're going to cut our carrots and they're round, right? What did I say about round things? What do we do with round things? What do we say about, what do we say about round things? What do we see about round things? Make round things what? Flat, make round things flat. So I'm gonna grip my other hand so you, you don't hurt yourself, right? You don't chop up the, your beautiful little fingers. Hold the carrot and then use the whole blade. Don't chop straight down. Do you see how I use the whole blade? Use the whole blade, okay? Use the whole blade. This is a relatively fat carrot. So I'm gonna go stir those cranberries. Yeah, I can hear them say, popping. Thank you, dear. Another five minutes, please. Yeah, every couple of minutes, you just wanna go over there and stir them up. So now again, I'm gonna use the whole blade. Don't just chop straight down. I was doing a cooking show and, and I had my niece prepping stuff for me. And I kept hearing that she's prepping the next thing because we, we film like three, three months in a row. And I kept hearing her making those noises. And, and I realized, I realized later, listen, you, did you hear that chop now noise? Now you didn't because you're going straight down. You're just using this part of the blade here. Use the whole blade and use more of your muscles, okay? Use the whole blade, use more of your muscles, okay? I'm the kind of girl I chop and I throw in. I chop and then I throw in. My sister 
chops everything the night before, puts it in little baggies. And then when she's ready to cook, she throws the stuff in. I'm too lazy for that. I want to do it, get it all done all at once, all done all at once, all done all at once. Here we go. Okay. I think we're going to do a little bit more carrots. Who else loves carrots? Put carrots in the chat. If you don't love carrots, if you just love carrots, put carrots in the chat. Just cooked carrots. Oh my gosh. He just goes nuts over cooked carrots. Carrots. Mary loves carrots. Very good. Very good. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So I should have given my niece a little bit of a lesson on how to chop stuff beforehand, but it, that's a full day when I do three months of shows in one day for um, Montgomery Municipal Cable Television. I think it's channel 16, but it's also on my YouTube channel. They also have a YouTube channel. Oh, and by the way, on that note, on that note, while I'm cooking here, Kaylin's gonna put in the chat, my link to my YouTube channel, my link to my YouTube channel. So you can see other cooking shows that I do, but not as, as entertaining as when you're live with me, right? Not as entertaining as when you're live with me. And I'm just going to ask very sweetly, please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. And Tina, your alarm is going off. For the I know you're saying something, but I can't hear you. Oh, Say it again, you please. Your uh, timer is going off for the oven. For your oh. Second. Or not your stuffing bag. The apple pie cups. Yeah. Okay. I'll go check them. Thank you. I'll go check them in just a second. But in the oil, if you are going to use dry sage, dried sage, that's when you're going to put it in right now in the oil. So dried herbs go in the oil. Fresh herbs are going to go in a little later. Okay. That's my fresh sage from my garden. I'll be right back. Let's go check our apples. Oh. Apples were still crunchy. So we're going to do another seven minutes. Okay. It all depends on the time or it depends on the day of the, 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 the month. It all depends. I'm going to turn a fan on because I got a little smoke going on here. Okay. It all depends. Depends on the apples too. I don't know. I think I want to put that up. It's supposed to be 400. It's supposed to be four. Yeah, 400. Hmm. All right. I just put my oven up a little bit. Okay. Got my onions, got the carrots going in here. I've got a little sea salt. We're going to put in a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And I'm going to put in some celery. I'm going to put in some celery and I'm going to show you my lazy way with celery. First of all, never buy celery that's not organic because celery sops up all the toxins in soil and we just don't need those toxins in our body. I got the celery heart. I washed in between. I didn't disconnect them. And here we go. Everything's all together. And that's it. Got the trio going on. What about a little garlic? Who wants a little garlic in their stuffing? Anybody want a little garlic in their stuffing? Put garlic in the chat. Put garlic in the chat if they want a little garlic in their stuffing. Put garlic in the chat. Yes, please. Yes, please. Let's put some garlic in there. Garlic is going to pop the flavor. Okay. By the way, you could have used olive oil instead of butter. I just think stuffing deserves a little bit of butter. I think stuffing deserves a little bit of butter. Okay. So we're going to get some garlic and I'd smash it with the back of my knife. <clears throat> you can get your garlic press if you want. Or you can just get the, just smash it and slice it up. Again, I slice towards my fingers. That's the way I've always been taught to do it. And, and throw your cranberry sauce when you have a moment as well. Thank you, dear. Let me get some more garlic in there first and then I'll go stir it up. You can just get your knife and chop it through with the knife. 
whatever's easier for you. Who cuts in their hand like I did? And who cuts, who, who would rather do it on the cutting board? Who cuts in their hand like I did? Or who would rather do it on the cutting board? Put hand or cutting board in the chat. I want to see it. Hand or cutting board in the chat. Okay. Now, because I've got a lot of garlic on my fingers, I don't want garlic all over the place. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. On the board, yeah. Some people would rather do it on the board. Yeah, that's just the way I was taught. So I can do it either way. It depends. Yeah, in your hand mostly, Mary. Yeah, everyone's different, right? Everyone's different. So I just want to show you the cranberries. There's just not enough room on the counter to do this as well as everything else. They'll be done when they when the cranberries start to pop a little bit and they're not there yet. They're not there yet. Just keep them cooking. Another three minute timer on that, dear. All right, what's next? What's next? In this stuffing, I mean, in this, yeah, in our stuffing, we can either, I do gluten-free stuffing that doesn't have any kind of anything ambiguous in the ingredients, okay? I know exactly what everything is. Brown rice flour, white rice flour, potato starch, tapioca flour, Brown, it's got a little brown sugar. I'm okay with a little bit. So this is a treat. I don't eat this all the way. Um, potato flour, sea salt, garlic powder, egg whites, yeast, parsley, eggs, thyme, sage. I know everything that's in here. I can eat this. Okay. It doesn't have artificial ingredients in it. And that's what you want to avoid. But if you don't want to do stuffing, the actual stuffing mix, which most stuffing mixes, I will tell you, full of MSG. You can get some butternut squash, some butternut squash and chop up your butternut squash and put it right in there. I'm gonna chop it up into smaller. This is one that I chopped up yesterday. And if anyone wants to know, wants to see me cut up a butternut squash, by all means, let me know. I will do it for you because I've got two of them here and we can talk all about our butternut squash or how to chop up a butternut squash. If you wanna learn how to chop up a butternut squash, let me know. Let me know in the chat, put butternut squash in the chat and I will, I will show you how to cut up a butternut squash. I will show you how to cut up a butternut squash. Yeah, Vicki says butternut squash, good. I'm making my butternut squash pieces really small because I want them to cook just a little quicker. I should have put them in right after the carrots, but sometimes I put the butternut squash in there, sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I just do the gluten-free stuffing. Sometimes I, I omit it completely and just do a cup of almond flour, a cup of almond flour. I'm going to do a little bit more butternut squash in this, and then I'll cut one up for you. Okay. Then I'll cut one up for you. Oh, you know what might be easier? No, let me do this. Let me finish this real quick. All right, here we go. Let's get a butternut squash and let's cut up a butternut squash. Let me run this through. First of all, there's different kinds of squashes. This is a, called a butternut squash. I just poke it and throw it, I put holes in it, put it in the oven 350 for about 30 minutes, cut it in half and scoop out the flesh, amazing. Delicata squash. I can eat the skin on this one. I slice it up with my mandolin, put it on a cookie sheet, a little bit of salt, pepper, Parmesan cheese, roast it. 375 for about 15 minutes. This is an acorn squash. Yes, you can eat the skin, scrub it, clean it, slice it up thin, take out the seeds and do the same thing as you did with the delicata squash. Absolutely amazing. Okay. This is getting close to being done. This is good. So let's get this going. Make sure we have time for everything. I've got a vegetable peeler. I like this version versus the other version that goes the other way. I like the way that this holds in my hand. I can grip it better than the other one. I can use my whole hand or the other one, I don't know, twists your wrist funny. And I love this one. And look Thank how easy you, this is. Oh, so sorry, your cranberry sauce and your apple pie cup timer are going off. Thank you, dear. All right, I'm going to finish peeling this and then I'll get to that, okay? Don't let me not do that. 
Don't be afraid to make a little mess. Who knows what I'm doing with all my vegetable scraps? Does anybody have an idea what I'm doing with all my vegetable scraps? I kind of throw them over here into a container. Does anybody know what I do with them? Put it in the chat if you know, if you have a clue what I do with my vegetable scraps. Anybody? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Okay, in my opinion, peeling it is the worst part, okay? That's my opinion though. Yeah, compost, exactly. I give it right back to Mother Earth. I give it right back to Mother Earth. And she knows what to do with it as opposed to putting it in the, in the trash. Okay, there we go. Even if you don't have a garden, dig a hole, throw it all in, okay? Okay, we need to check two things, apples and cranberries. Cranberries, almost done. Actually, they're done. I'll show them to you in a minute. Ugh. Apple pie cups are done. I'm gonna let this cool and I'll take one out for you in a little bit, okay? I'm gonna let this cook for five more minutes. <clears throat> five more minutes over here. Cranberry sauce is done. You see how most of the cranberries have popped? You see how most of them have popped? And if they haven't, if I just smash them, they'll smash. Okay, and you see how nice and thick that is? That's what we're looking for. And we're gonna doctor that up in just a moment. We're gonna doctor it up in, in just a moment. Okay, where were we? We are cutting up a butternut squash. We don't have a ton of time. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of how to do this. Remember I say round things, make them flat. Get yourself a spoon. This so happens to be a grapefruit peeler and take out the seeds. Take out the seeds, round things again, make them flat. There we go. And that is how you peel and cut a butternut squash. I'm not gonna finish it, I'll finish it later because we need time whoops, to do everything else that we need to do today, okay? All right, super simple. It's just a matter of taking the time to do it, right? Taking the time to do that and getting the right tools. So here we go, we've got our ground meat. We're gonna crack one egg in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of my stuffing mix in there. Oh, you know what? I have the butternut squash. I don't need the stuffing mix. I don't need to use that. I have butternut squash. I'm gonna turn that off. Put all of that right in there. And you know what's missing? Some fresh sage, some fresh sage. So I'm gonna get my fresh sage. Here we go. Get some of those leaves. Oh, it smells so good. I've been reading a book called Under the Tuscan Sun. I know most of you have heard of it. It's from the 1990s, but <clears throat> my whole life I've been going back and forth to Italy. And it's just a nice, nice, nice book. But one thing that we haven't done in, in my household, we're from Umbria, which is right near Cortona, about 45 minutes from it, is fried sage. She talks about a recipe of getting sage and just frying it. I'm like, that's a great idea. She just fries it in a little bit of olive oil for a couple of minutes. So there's our fresh sage. You can, by all means, put powdered. By all means, use powdered. It doesn't have to be fresh sage. Get another one of my million handy dandy spoons. I'm gonna get my, another stoneware loaf pan. And here we go. I'm just gonna mix all of this together. The butternut squash could have been cooked a little bit longer, but we need to get this done. So it'll cook in the oven. I'm not concerned about it. I'm not concerned about it at all. It'll cook in the oven. Now, if you feel like you need a little bit of breadcrumbs in here, go ahead and use either that the almond flour, quarter cup of the almond flour. Let's go ahead and put some of that stuffing in there. This one needed a little bit more substance. So I'm putting a little bit of the stuffing in there. Mix it all up. And then we're gonna put the cranberry sauce on the top. 
I'm used to doing two pounds at once. So I always do two pounds at once because I cook abundanza, like my, my grandma would say, abundanza, abundanza, too much, way too much, too much abundance. And I'm trying to do a half a recipe and I think I put a little bit too much vegetables in here, but it's fine. More vegetables, the better. Did you know that we need 10 to 12 cups of vegetables a day? My husband has a hard time eating all of his vegetables, but when I put it in his meatloaf, he gets his vegetables. He gets his vegetables. So the more, the more, the merrier, the more, the merrier. Okay, get that all mixed up in there with the egg and everything else. The egg is just a binder. You can also do this with your hands, but the vegetables are a little on the hot side because they just came out of the pan. So be careful with that. Okay, here we go. See how that all got mixed through? It doesn't matter that it's chunky. Remember this, it, you, you need vegetables. The more vegetables in our lives, the better. 10 to 12 cups of, cups of vegetables a day, full of vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, everything that your body needs are in vegetables. Not enough protein, so we need a little protein. That's why we've got the turkey in here. Now let's get that cranberry. Oh, we're doing great on time. We're doing great on time. Caitlin is gonna put in the chat a link to, uh, of course you already got the YouTube channel, but she's gonna put another link to my uh, Joyful Gut Reboot Guide. It's an ebook that I wrote for you all about how you can have a joyful gut for the rest of your life. And in there, if you look deep, you will find uh, a free session with me. Yep, a free session I'll give to everybody. So yes, I got my cranberry sauce. Don't worry, but in a little bit of organic ketchup that doesn't have a terrible amount of sugar in it. I'm gonna put some Dijon mustard in there. Mix that all up. I know it sounds a little weird, but the cranberry sauce, my husband loves it. Better to do the cranberry sauce mixed with ketchup than all ketchup. And in my recipe, it says to bake this and then halfway through, put the sauce on top. You know what? I got to go in and change that because I'm lazy. It's too much to do it halfway through. I do, I've done it right from the beginning every single time. And I just haven't changed the recipe. So there we have it. I'm going to put this in the oven for about 50 minutes in an oven that should be about 400 degrees, not 415, bake 415, 400. And there we go. Okay, so let's take a look at our finished products here. Unfortunately, we're not going to see the turkey and stuffing meatloaf, but look at that. The string beans and portobello mushrooms, don't they look delectable? Phenomenal. Everyone loves these. Everyone loves these. Look how pretty they are. And let's take a look at those apple pie cups. I need another thing. Now, what I'd like to know in the last two minutes that we are together today, in the last two minutes that we are together, I would love to know what have you found most valuable about our time together today? What have you found most valuable about our time together today? What is that one or two things that you're going to take away and go, yes, I got that. I'm going to use that in my life now. Thank you, Tina. So what are the one or two things that you found most valuable or just the one thing that you found most valuable about our time together today. Adding mushrooms to green beans. Yeah, yakon looks delicious. There you go. And there's the apple pie cup. I'm telling you, just go in with a spoon. Don't try to, I mean, I've eaten it right from here once it cools, but it's kind of fall apart-ish. It's really nice to eat with a spoon and oh, delicious. There we go. Adding mushrooms. Yeah, so what have you found most, most valuable about our time together today? Go ahead and put that in the chat. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you for being here today. Thank you also, especially to the Fairfax Library and the Fairfax Foundation. I really appreciate you. And so nice to be here today. Thank you. That You're going to make all three dishes. Good, Mary. I'm so happy. Vicki, where are these recipes? They put the link in the chat earlier. Rabinder, can you put the link in one more time? Put the link in one more time. So I'm so happy that you're going to be, you're inspired to make these recipes for your family and for yourselves so you can live a life that's full of health, full of vibrancy and free. Thank you again. Happy Thanksgiving. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Until next time, namaste.
Bye for now, everyone. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.